This lecture in Climate and Earth 401 continues our discussion of forces that will be used in the momentum equation and focuses on the surface force, the viscous force. The viscous force is also viscosity or friction, and it is a force that is related to the motion and is opposed to the motion. It is the force that tends to slow things down. As before, how do we express forces? We're going to use the idea of an idealized parcel that we're going to calculate the balance of forces on, and then we're going to take the limit as that parcel becomes very small, and we move to the continuous equations. The notion of the idealized parcel, the coordinate system that we will refer to, and the idea of the structure of a parcel aligned with the x, y, and z coordinate system. All of these ideas are introduced in more detail in the lecture on the derivation of the gravitational force and will not be repeated here. The viscous force is an example of a surface force. Surface forces are proportional to the area of the surface of our particle in the atmosphere. They are independent of mass, and they depend on the characteristics of the particle of the atmosphere and characteristics of the flow. And in the case of the viscous force, you can think of the composition of the fluid as being somewhat intuitive to its viscosity, because you could imagine something like pancake syrup being very thick and viscous, whereas air, also a fluid, is not especially viscous. And in fact, we will, in most cases, ignore the viscous force in this class because we will consider flow away from the surface. This will not always be true, and you do need to have an intuitive understanding of the viscous force. The viscous force. There is in a fluid friction. This resists flow. It is dissipative. That means that it causes energy to, to dissipate. It causes motion to dissipate. And if the fluid is not otherwise forced, the viscous force will slow the fluid and bring it to rest. Away from the boundaries in the atmosphere, this frictional force is often small and it is often ignored. And we will revisit this as we learn more. Close to the boundaries, however, we have to consider friction. In order to derive the viscous force, it's useful to think of the velocity away from the surface as u in meters per second, so this is in one direction, the x direction from west to east. And we have the surface here of different types. So there's the oceanic surface, the land surface, and the biosphere surface. And we have the premise that at the surface, the velocity must be equal to zero. So we can imagine a velocity in the free atmosphere of, of u we imagine it at zero, and we imagine a linear, or we assume a linear profile taking us from the free atmosphere down to zero at the surface. How do we derive such a force? One of the classic ways to do this is to imagine that you have a moving plate, and the moving plate has drag on it, and the drag on the moving plate is the same as the force required to keep the plate moving. It will be proportional to the area A, it will be proportional to the velocity of the plate, and it will be inversely proportional to the distance between, say, these two plates. In this configuration, what we've done is here's a plate, here's another plate. This plate is not moving, this plate is moving at a velocity u naught, and the velocity profile has set up in a linear relationship between the top and the bottom plate. When we say something is proportional, as introduced in a number of other lectures, we usually mean that we assume a linear relationship, and that this model that we're using here is based on observation. It is an approximation, and this is often said to be the Newtonian approach where we assume linear relationships, and when and where we have linear relationships, we are often going to use Taylor series expansions 
that have been truncated at that first linear term. Since we generally do not consider the viscous force explicitly in the flows that we will be studying in this class, I'm not going to spend a lot of time deriving it, though I will provide a set of slides that show the derivation of the viscous force using our idealized parcel and our linearized approach. We end up, after that derivation, with an expression of the force per unit mass as equal to this quantity nu, which is the kinematic viscosity coefficient, and that quantity is going to be equal to a previously introduced quantity mu divided by rho, where that quantity mu up here is the constant of proportionality in this original configuration. And that's going to be multiplied times del squared, the Laplacian, the second derivative of the u vector. So the f vector and the u vector are aligned with each other and they're opposite to each other because the second derivative of a quantity is generally the opposite sign of the quantity itself. So that is the form of the viscous force that we will use in this course. Again, it's an example of a surface force. It is proportional to the area, it is independent of the mass, and it depends upon the characteristics of the flow, and especially in the case of the viscous force, it depends upon the shear of the flow, where the shear will be the derivative of the velocity by some spatial direction. And that is the end of the discussion of the viscous force.